And welcome into a new video. Um, a quick review of this Iowa LCX150 micro compact system. Now, you've seen this in the last video uh, about the um, uh, answering machine um, tape. <clears throat> but I wanted to actually cover this unit specifically. Um, recently, I've grown um, to like this micro compact system and this design and this particular piece of equipment in general. Um, why? Because <laughs> this is certainly a product of its time. 1997, I believe. The sticker on the back, 97 or 98. Um... And especially for someone who is short on space, as you can see, um, I needed something that would have AM FM tuner, um, aux cable, uh, or RCA jacks in the back, um, and I wanted a cassette deck as well, and a good one. Not didn't have to be amazing. I already have something much better. But I wanted something that at least would allow me to record off the air because I like to make recordings of radio stations. Uh, in fact, um, a lot of my uh, recordings are stuff that's off the air. I sort of archive things like that. <clears throat> I also wanted something that would allow for uh, external speakers. And I actually... <laughs> okay, so I bought this at the Goodwill, as you can see here, uh, for... <clears throat> Six ninety nine, um, and on the same day. Now, perhaps these actually came with the original system, or the original owner had these. But on the, on the same day, the same trip, they also had <clears throat> these Technics uh, bookshelf speakers, um, and they hook up on the back like any standard. Um, I'll get to that. Like any standard. Um, speakers of that time would. FM antenna, AM antenna, RCA inputs, no outputs, and uh, your speakers. And it tucks in nicely, and this is just a AM uh, loop antenna. And I just have another piece of um, speaker cable for FM antenna. <clears throat> um, and it barely takes up any space it's perfect i really like it um it lets me do a lot of what i need to do and doesn't take up much space especially because uh, um this doesn't have any speakers of its own you hook up whatever pair of speakers you want um <clears throat> excuse me so anyway um it's a little finagly honestly i think there might be some buttons that might be sort of misfiring a little bit but it really barely happens uh, so uh, i'm not gonna be able to play much of the radio because you know copyright um the audio quality though is is incredible of these technics speakers so i'll let it just kind of scan perfect so the display let's lower that a little bit the display is great you have your stereo fm indicator uh you have Band indicator. Uh, M stands for manual tuning. 90.1, your frequency readout. And a memory indicator there, I believe. On the uh, machine itself, you have CD repeat set, which I believe is time set. Uh, skip search. So this is your AM, FM tuning and also your track skip. Stop for the CD. Play and pause for CD. Three... Uh, equalizer settings, your volume up and down, uh, aux switch there, and if you want to get back, you just hit band, and it goes back to FM. It also says tune when it locks in on a signal, and your band selector. And since we're at night, uh, we're picking up WJR Detroit, 760 AM, 50,000 watt blowtorch, clear channel signal. I'm over here in New Jersey which is a, a pretty good indication of how sensitive the receiver is. And, and, and for someone who is a ham, um, who knows, you know, and has expensive receivers, this thing um, 
while not really uh, uh, amazing on FM, it's really wide uh, FM reception. You know, it sounds great for your local and semi-distant signals, but this thing actually shines on AM. Now, I do have a loop antenna here, which, you know, really does let you hone in on a signal. Um, but what I love about it is that this is actually a wide, wide band AM receiver. Uh, AM really has never sounded this good on a digital radio before. Uh, it sounds great. Uh, Alan, final question for you. Uh, obviously, you know, when you look to Europe... Um, and because it's such a wide bandwidth, uh, you really hear the, the high ends, um, especially on your talk stations too. You actually can hear the, you know, pronounce, pronouncing the S's and C's and things like that. Um, yeah, I mean, you're seeing this in extreme form right now, so if you follow just what's happening with the, the fuel prices and the power prices, but even before... CFZM from Chicago, I mean, Toronto. It's another French-Canadian. WGN Chicago. New York and Cuba. And you might argue maybe the Roman Empire. You may... WRW. I'll see if I can find... Um, yeah, it does that once in a while. If you press the buttons a little often, it goes for, it goes to CD for some reason. There's a local station here. Oh. All right, so I'm going to have to lower that. Um, TLC on 1360 AM. WNJC. Um, but... Maybe from the few seconds you were able to hear it, you could tell this actually sounds incredible. Um, really makes music stations on AM actually sound quite good. So can't rave about that enough. All right. So that's your AM FM stuff. Uh, now, the thing that I was a little unsure of, to be quite honest with you, how was the built in cassette deck going to sound? Because, um, well, you saw it there. One of the ways that I test and that a lot of people test how good a cassette deck is going to sound is the eject test. It doesn't have a hard eject where it just pops out or a soft eject where it actually is damp, dampered. This is a little fast, but it's a soft eject. Next test. Do we have an actual true stereo tape head or do we have a mono head like most of the modern cassette decks are? Um... One of the things that I hate is that a lot of boom boxes made, usually 2000 and later on, were cheaping, were cheaping out on the tape mechanism if they even had one. Um, and we're just putting in a mono head. But as you can see, that is a true stereo head. How do you know that? Because there is a line. Let's see how close we can get here. There is a line. Oh. Um... In the center of that head, you see a line going through the middle. That indicates a stereo head, which is good news. Now, I'm, I'm not sure exactly who made this cassette mechanism to begin with. It's probably a Tanishin. Um, but it's actually a, a pretty good sounding tape deck, if not a, if not a very good sounding tape deck. Uh, let me see if I have anything that I could use that's not going to hit a copyright to test that. Um... <laughs> Let's see here. Most of the stuff I have here is copyright. Um, I think our best bet's probably this right here. Um, this is uh, FM Skyline Deluxe Memory Suite. It's a Vaporwave album I got at a record store down in Richmond, Virginia. Um, I will shout out our good friend here. Pete Curry, BMI. So it is a copyright, but if I only play a few seconds, I probably won't have the video taken down at the bare minimum. So one of the things, um, when you when you hit play, it on a excuse me, let's say let's say we're on the radio, right? You hit play. Well, that was one thing. It does tend to move. It automatically switches to tape mode. There is no tape mode. You just hit play and it goes. 
Um, Okay, so uh, I'm filming this with an iPhone 11, so obviously I can't, you know, do it direct in on this phone, but take my word for it, from what you could hear, this actually does sound quite good. Um, making recordings off the air, something I do a lot, something that I don't think gets reviewed enough as well. Um, how good does it actually take recordings off the air? Um, let me just find a cassette that's not really being in use. This is just a standard type one. Pop that in. We'll go and we'll... We'll just record uh, some talking. Can I just add one thing Yeah, here? please do. Uh, which, which is that... And this, I just want to emphasize... This is our local NPR affiliate. Um, now, this is not a one-touch. You have to press both your record and play down. And it's going. Now, I should say that, there, you know, when you're going with, when you're using the volume, that doesn't really make an effect on the cassette. I think this has an AGC built in, so it just automatically takes the loudest level it can handle. Uh, there is no type 1, type 2 metal selection. It's just, you know, whatever you got. All right, that should be enough. We'll rewind real fast. There is no auto stop either, um, and we can hear how that sounded real fast. Problem for a minority of users, right? So whether you're talking about depression or you're talking about the prevalence of hate speech or other kinds of rabbit holes on the internet, uh, it's not that the average user is subjected to this. Um, most people, when they're on Facebook, for instance, it's just sort of meaningless social interactions between uh, different people. It's not that they are being drawn to a QAnon conspiracy world. So it makes really, really, really nice sounding recordings off the air, which is something that really... Oh, I did lie. There is auto stop. I'm sorry. Um, so that's good. Um, and I, I have done tests between... You know, does does it actually make a difference in recording if I'm using type 1 or type 2 on this? And the answer is no. They pretty much sound identical. Uh, and I do have plenty of type 2 tapes. Really nice, the uh, the uh, Mixel C90s. Um, these are really expensive now. I actually got these gifted to me by my old public school teacher. I mean, <laughs> public speaking teacher in college. Who also actually gave me... Our next object here, which is a V437C TAC deck. Um, so shout out to him. Um, years ago, he actually gave me his entire cassette collection of these really nice Type 2s and his cassette deck. Um, um, oh my God, and I'm blanking on his name. Coppola. Uh, uh, Frank Coppola. I remember because of the director, Francis Ford Coppola. Anyway. So I have this hooked up to the aux input on the back here because I really like using this deck. Um, you know, because obviously this is a an early 80s, really nice. This is back when cassettes were the main, you know, um, um, form of media besides uh, records. Um, and this has, you know, your metal chrome selection here versus normal uh, for in and out or recording, I should say record mute a full um um slider for your input level uh this has dolby noise this has c b and c bias and output so this has everything you'd expect this is a really nice deck this is not the one that i use to make recordings as much per se um but this is the one that i do use a lot for uh simply just listening purposes um so Really, there's not much to say about it. It sounds exactly the way it should. Um, I have the Sundays in here. Uh, ooh, let's see. Can we focus? Anyway. Um, so that's the use of the aux. Now, the last one. One that I've actually never really tried before because I'm not much of a CD person at all. I'm really all analog. 
Um, but I do have a couple CDs th that were laying around. And so, and the reason I'm not really that big of a CD fan, I guess, is because there's not much um, really to say about it because it's digital. Uh, so from my experience, there's really no difference between a $10 CD player and a $1,000 CD player. Um, you know, the type of lens that it uses or the quality of it to my ears has really, really never made much of a difference. I'm sure that there are CD fanatics who would kill me for saying that. I do apologize. I just have really never heard it. Uh, but I do have some CDs here. Um, I have Weezer's Maladroit, which is not in its case. As you can tell, that's really how little I care about CDs. But we'll pop it in the tray and uh, we'll hit play. First time I've actually tested out the CD option, so I have no idea if it's going to work or not. I assume it would. Oh, does the CD player on this not work? Huh. Like I said, I, I, I've i loved this. I've never even used the CD tray. Um... Damn, this is totally unscripted. Um, huh, interesting. It doesn't seem like it wants to play the CD. Well, luckily to me, that's no big deal because I never use it. <sighs> but I do see some dust in there, so we'll see if we can get this to work on camera. Then I'll cut the video because it's another long one on the channel. Last video was like over half an hour. <sighs> I don't think that made any bit of a difference uh, okay uh, well we'll try a different CD here I have this here which I've never actually played before but I got this also at the Goodwill the first 40 years of NPR which I thought was really cool it's a ton of off-air recordings uh, from NPR over the years uh, that's in its case, so maybe we'll, uh, this one will actually work. All right, we'll just, uh, we'll, we'll play the 2000s collection. Let's see. Apologies for the shaky camera, too. I know, I hate you. Uh, sounds like it's trying, and then it just stops. Wow. Damn. We'll try it one more time here. Yeah. Doesn't want to work. All right. Well, at least I, I probably now know why this guy threw it out. Because the CD player wasn't working. And I assume he probably liked cds but luckily the cassette deck is in perfectly working condition the F am fm radio works fine aux works great for my cassette deck and really for me i'm actually quite happy with it even if the cd player doesn't work so if you like cds use cds uh <laughs> well then i guess this unit wouldn't wouldn't be the one for you but if you don't really care about cds which Actually, a number of people seem to not really care that much these days about CDs. And you just want AM, FM radio, aux input, cassette. This is the one for you. So this is a totally unscripted, as you can no doubt tell, unplanned review of the Iowa LCX 150 mini micro component system. Um, and yeah. <laughs> 